Joining us, Democratic Senator from Virginia, Tim Kaine, and his special guest for tonight's State of the Union, you see her right there, Elizabeth Carr. You were a very cute baby, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. Very well behaved. I was also impressed at how well your mom was moving three days after birth. Um, tell me what you think about the, the current debate right now and, and this Alabama uh, court ruling. You know, what's so interesting about this debate right now is that when I was born 42 years ago, essentially the same debate was happening. Um, but then I was born and many people realized that I was just a normal baby like everybody else. So um, while the ruling was devastating to the IVF community, I'm hopeful that through efforts like those of Senator Kane and Duckworth, that we can move forward to actually protect IVF on a national level. What's your message to those who argue that an embryo should have the same rights as a child, Elizabeth? So I think it's critical here that people understand the science of IVF and understand that one embryo does not equal one baby. Um, and it takes many, many chances. And IVF is sadly not a magic bullet. So really, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of eggs and embryos to actually end up with that live birth. I think that's a critical piece that many people have overlooked. Senator, why was it so important for you to invite Elizabeth tonight? Um, Katie, when I heard uh, about the Alabama decision, particularly I was in Birmingham the day that the university decided they had to terminate all IVF procedures, I just thought about all the people I know who've used IVF or been born by IVF, and something in the back of my head said, I think this story might have started in Virginia. So when I got back home, I did my research and I found out about Elizabeth being born at Norfolk General Hospital in 1981. Um, I read an interview that she gave after the Alabama ruling where she used a very chilling phrase, I feel like I'm an endangered species. And that made me reach out to her to see if she might want to come and be part of the State of the Union tonight. And it also inspired me to join with Senator Tammy Duckworth in a bill, the Access to Building Families Act, that would create a right for patients to access IVF and providers to provide IVF services in every zip code in this country. And we're going to push to get it passed. I was watching Speaker Mike Johnson this morning in an interview. He was asked about the issue of embryos. And um, he said this was going to be an issue for the states. It's not going to be a federal issue. There will be no federal law regarding this. Do you think that there's a chance that this legislation, if it does come to the floor in the Senate and passes the Senate, which is an if, would make it out of the House? Katie, I do. Here's why. I think the votes are there on the floor of the House. In the Senate, as you know, we have to get to 60 votes. The bill is in the committee uh, that I, where I serve, Health, Education, Labor, Pension. I think we can get this bill out of the Health Committee with a significant bipartisan vote. On the floor of the Senate, we'll have 51 Democrats. We need to get at least nine Republicans. Um, but I think we can get there. And if we can get there, I think with all the Republicans on the House side saying, of course I believe in IVF. Well, this is the bill that will test whether whether it's words or whether it's commitment and action. And I think uh, we're going to move urgently on this. There's an uphill battle for control of the Senate for Democrats. Um, the electoral map does not look great for the Democrats' chances of keeping the Senate. Does this bill get brought up if the Republicans are in control? Um, I think we got to do I, we got to do it now. I mean, partly because of the issue of control, as you mentioned, but also you've got parents all over this country. I had a roundtable with many of them in Norfolk Monday, and I'm doing another one tomorrow in Northern Virginia, who are very, very afraid right now. They're they're worried about whether they can build their families in the way they plan to, and providers are afraid about whether they can just treat their patients in the ways the patients deserve. So, for a whole lot of reasons, but most especially the the urgent need to give people a sense of comfort uh, and confidence that the way they plan to build their family will be open to them. We need to move quick. Elizabeth, what do you want to hear from President Biden tonight? Obviously, I'd love to hear him bring up um, protecting IVF nationally. That's uh, that's high on my wish list. Um, I think many people that's high on their wish list. Truly, it's it's an incredible honor to to be here and represent the IVF community and more than 12 million babies around the world who've now been born through this technology. So I think we'll all be uh, listening intently this evening. And what about Katie Britt, who's delivering the rebuttal for the Republicans, the senator from Alabama? Look, I mean, because she's from Alabama, I don't think she can avoid the elephant in the room. She's going to have to talk about this. But again, the question is not whether you say you're pro-IVF, but whether you support legislation that's pro-IVF. Alabama has tried to kind of half correct 
their mistake by saying, guess what, we'll give you immunity if you get sued. That's not the same thing as saying we support and encourage IVF, we, we embrace IVF. If, if you get immunity if somebody brings you brings a lawsuit against you, you might still worry about your licensing or your credentialing. If you're a family, you worried about whether there's a chilling effect that will make providers decide, I don't want to do it in this state, I'm going to move somewhere else. Let's do this national right and make sure that women and families in every zip code in this country know that if they choose to build their family this way, they can do it. Senator, is this argument about science or is it about religion? Well, it's, it, everyone is entitled to their own religious beliefs. Um, but what puzzles me as a Catholic is people saying that they're pro-life, but fighting against uh, an innovation, a human innovation that has created 12 million lives. I mean, think of the net effect of these 12 million people living their best lives, raising families, bringing joy to their families, contributing their, to their communities. It's such a net benefit for the world. Why would we want to erase that from who we are as a planet?